I'm Robert Creamer. I'm in the uh, photography department. I teach ARTD 114, which is the basic class, and I teach the ARTD 250, which is the advanced class, and I'm the advisor for the photography club. I've traveled with photography in almost three different ways. I've uh, taught photography. I developed a business where I would go and make portfolio views for architects for either their publications, for magazines, for their wall decor, and I'm also an artist. Over the years, all three of those have kind of dominated my life. I became interested in photography through a friend of mine. He was a photographer for a college paper and yearbook. He had a fabulous 35 millimeter camera. I looked through it at one time, and as soon as I did, I realized that there was a way to compose the world in a way that you hadn't seen before. My career in photography started at MICA, the Maryland Institute College of Art. In the 1970s, there were very few places that you could go to study photography. I bought an enlarger, I bought an enlar enlarging lens in the rudimentary equipment, and I actually set up a small little dark room in the laundry room of my guest's house where I was staying. And I printed this small little portfolio with all the little pictures jammed up into the corner of an eight by 10 print. I submitted them to Portfolio Day at MICA, and I came down with my small box of prints. I have to admit, I felt sick to my stomach. I saw all of these other people coming down, getting off the train from New York with their big portfolio cases under their arm. We all dropped them off in the same room, and I remember that man's name, his name was John Slorp. He looked at all of the portfolios while we had a tour. When I went back to pick up my portfolio, we were in a room and he was talking about all of the photographs that he had seen that day. I wanted to get out of there. I tapped a few people on the shoulder and said, pass that little box back to me, will you please? So someone grabbed my little eight by 10 box buried under all these large portfolio cases. It began to work its way back through the crowd. Slorped grabbed the box. My heart sank out of my feet. He held it high and he said, whose pictures are these? And I said, they're mine. He said, this is the only person I'm going to recommend get advanced standing. Using a scanner as a camera is a completely different mindset. You're very much starting like a painter. You're staring against this blank canvas. So I essentially have this large flatbed scanner and nothing's there. So I actually have to construct I have whatever I photograph, I have to actually place there. So now I become this photographer that has to design and to lay out and to rearrange. So my subject matter with the scanner as a camera have been pretty much natural history items. And a lot of times they are flowers in decay. This really harkens back to the days when I was a botany major in college. I made the transition to photography through botany by, instead of collecting the plants, I actually started taking pictures of the plants. Uh, my most notable achievement um, really falls maybe into two of those categories. Uh, the first one is architectural photography. A number of years ago, there was a nationwide competition for the National Park Service to find two photographers that they would send out to the national parks to make their prominent views. So I applied and over the long interview uh, process, I was selected as one of the two photographers. So immediately upon that, I was given six national parks that they wanted me to photograph in in that particular year. So I traveled all throughout the United States. I held that contract for eight years, photographing many different national parks. And one of the most interesting times was that I actually had the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. reserved for me one night. I also had the Lincoln Memorial reserved. Now, with using the scanner as a camera, as an artist, I was actually given a show at the Smithsonian Institution, the Museum of Natural History. They told me that I was the first living artist to ever have a complete show by myself. That I had been scanning natural history items. I had scanned everything from leopard femurs to rhinoceros skulls to dead birds to frogs to skeletons and also my botanical work. They thought that through the eyes of an artist that the scientist could learn 
to take a look and to look more closely at the subject that they were dealing with. When people look at my photographs, everyone comes with their own interpretation. I right now, working with the scanner's camera, working with botanical items, the things, the, the flowers are aged. They've gone through transitions. So someone who might be a senior citizen is looking at my work and they're thinking about that there is beauty in the aging process. Someone who might be young and looking at them is very interested just in the fact that mother nature is just so awesome and that it goes through these changes that they've never really noticed. When you have a bouquet of flowers on your dining room table and they're tulips, if you were to watch them after you thought that they had died, if you had kept them on that table and you just looked at them every day, the transformation that they make over a period of two weeks is really remarkable. So I'm hoping that that's what they get from the picture, that there's this process, there's an appreciation for nature, but it's also to show them something that they haven't seen before. Now, working with the scanner as a camera, you can also make huge digital files. They're all at least 500 to 700 megabytes. I make very large prints for exhibitions. The prints are 44 by 96 inches, so they're really quite large. When they're that big, it also allows the viewer to investigate and to look and to scrutinize with such clarity and detail that they really are seeing some things for the very first time. One of the things that's kind of fun to watch is when someone looks at the pictures and I'm just observing them looking at my work, it's very interesting to see how often they smile. It's something about that awesome nature that just strikes a chord in people's heart and that makes them want to smile about the work. When you teach, you're always looking for the student who feels passion. When a, when a student comes to me and they ask if they should be a photographer, it's a question that I have to ask them back. It can't be just that you like to click the shutter or that you just like to own the camera and the equipment. It can't be just that. If you're not eating this, drinking this, sleeping, being an artist with the camera as your tool, I can't wholeheartedly recommend that someone pr pursue that path. If you wanted to be a photographer in the career, I think that you absolutely have to understand that it has to be passionate. You have to do it from a standpoint that you feel confident, that you feel that you can see things in a way that other people can't. And the way that you're gonna get there is by keeping your antenna up. When someone tells you something or when someone offers you an avenue when someone says to you, you might want to think about this, you might want to look at this person's work, my students need as an obligation to follow through with those things. I can impart a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things. I've, I've been on that path. You have to realize that if you do choose this path, that you become, uh, you become more than just a photographer. You have to be your own web designer. You have to be your own accountant. You'll end up doing your own taxes. You'll do your own marketing strategies. So it, you'll really be wearing a lot of hats. Under those circumstances, you have to take all of your studies seriously. You think that math might not be important. You think that communication or English might not be important. But all of those things are gonna tie in in some small little component part that's gonna make your occupation really work.